the female body has changed. It's not as easy to lose weight anymore. It's time we started looking beyond diet and exercise and began looking at the other side of weight loss. Welcome to the On Track Show. I'm Karen Martell, certified transformational nutritionist and founder of the On Track Women's Weight Loss Program. Each week, I will share with you the secrets to conquering your health and weight loss. All right, thanks for tuning in to today's podcast. In today's episode, we are talking about all things hypothyroid and weight loss, or maybe I should say the lack thereof weight loss. So we're going to be discussing signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, why you gain weight with hypothyroidism, how to properly have your thyroid tested and where you can have it tested if your doctor is not doing it properly for you. As well, what types of medication that is likely going to be prescribed to you and what your other options are when it comes to what is the best type of medication for most women that have hypothyroidism that will help them to lose weight. As well, the best diet to help with the weight loss. All right, so hypothyroidism is a condition where your thyroid gland doesn't produce enough certain important hormones, okay? So the thyroid hormone interacts and is critical for other systems of the body to function properly. A lot of people just associate hypothyroidism with weight and that, oh, if my thyroid's slow, I gain weight. But there's so many other systems in the body that it interacts with. And I know because I <laughs> went undiagnosed with a hypothyroid issue for, I would say, probably eight, nine years. And it could have been much longer than that. But that's when I really, when I look back, I can see when the symptoms started. And it was after the birth of my first child, which is really common in women. So from there, I just, it was like year after year, things just progressively got worse. And I didn't look Tip, like a typical hypothyroid person per se. A lot of people will relate it with, um, you know, thinning hair, weight gain, of course, right? But I always was able to keep my weight down and I didn't have thinning hair, you know, and I didn't have these other issues that go along with hypothyroidism, but I was extremely hypothyroid. So it took a long time. I went kind of under the radar for a very long time, even to myself, because I just didn't think that that was what the problem was. So now looking back, I can see how many other areas of my body that yes, it was actually affecting. So the thyroid is critical also for your gastrointestinal system. So, you know, that your digestive system, you know, it's very common to cause constipation. It will affect your endocrine system, which is your hormonal system. So it's going to affect the other hormones in the body. It affects the neurological, which is the brain. And it also affects the cardiovascular system, as well as, of course, determining how easy it is for you to lose weight. So typical symptoms of hypothyroidism are, of course, fatigue. So feeling tired all the time, increased sensitivity to cold constipation, dry skin, weight gain, puffy face, hoarseness in the voice, muscle weakness, elevated blood cholesterol levels, depression, impaired memory, muscle aches, tenderness, and stiffness, pain, stiffness, or swelling in your joints, heavier than normal or irregular menstrual periods, thinning hair, and slowed heart rate. Now, to understand why a person gains weight when they have hypothyroidism, you need to understand just the basic thyroid hormones, okay? So there's TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone, your free T4, your free T3, your total T4 and your total T3, reverse T3, and then there's two antibodies as well that we're looking for, thyroid peroxidase and antithyroid globulin antibodies as well. These are what you would normally go in to have checked, which you should be having checked when you go to your doctors, but very rarely will they actually check all of these, which we're going to get into. 
But basically when a woman, woman can't lose weight when she has hypothyroidism, it's because there isn't enough of that free T3 happening. And you need free T4 in order to have a good free T3 because the free T4 converts to the usable form of thyroid, which is free T3. So we really want to see what that free T3 level is because I like to say it's an indication of just how well your metabolism is running. You can think of your thyroid as your metabolism. It's a really good, just simple way to understand what's happening. When you take your temperature, which we're going to get into, if you're hypothyroid, your temperature is going to be below what the average human temperature should be. And so when you think about that, it's like how hot, <laughs> how well is your body running? You know, how quickly, how much is it burning up that fat on your body? That's the metabolism. And that directly relates to the levels of free T3 in the body. Okay, so let's jump into what you're going to be looking for when it comes to testing. Okay, this is huge. And if there's one just large takeaway that you can get from this episode, it is how to properly have your thyroid tested. Okay, because very few people, and this is why I got, you know, why I went under the radar for as long as I did, was because I wasn't being properly tested. And I'll tell you what, ladies, if you're suffering with weight loss resistance, which many of you are, which is why you listen to this podcast, please, please go get properly tested for your thyroid. And do not listen to what your doctor tells you as far as, oh, your TSH looks normal. You don't have a hypothyroid issue. Well, I'll tell you what, you very well could. So going back to that, those, those thyroid, what we really want to see in a test is your TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, anti-thyroid globulin antibodies. And if you head over to karenmartell.com, go under podcast episodes, I will have a free download that will give you a little list of exactly what you want to have tested at your doctor's office. Okay, so this is super important. So you can just take, you can march right in there with it and say, hey, here's what I want done. And do not let them only test your TSH. Okay, if you are struggling with weight loss resistance, you must get this thyroid panel done. Okay. So thyroid stimulating hormone is the one that doctors, is, I know here in Canada, they're actually not allowed to test anything past that unless there shows up an issue with the TSH. And that issue will likely be that it's too high. If the TSH comes back too high, it indicates that there's a hypothyroid issue. Okay, so then they may test your free T4. A lot of doctors will only then test your free T4 and still not test the free T3. They are going strictly by that TSH number, which is archaic. It is old and they should not, they, they really, really need to change this. Because as from, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the example, <laughs> my TSH was totally normal. It was not out of range. If anything, it was actually on the low range, which indicates to them there's definitely not a hypothyroid issue. I even convinced my doctor to finally test my free T4, and that came back normal. It was on the low end, which is, you know, the, for a free T4 and free T3, if it's low, it's hypothyroid. TSH, if it's high, it's hypothyroid. So my T free T4 came back in normal to low range. I just had a girl yesterday, young, 26 years old. She wasn't, you know, she was maybe 10, 20 pounds overweight and had been in and out of doctor's offices asking them to please check her thyroid because she felt really tired all the time. Couldn't understand why she wasn't losing weight because she ate really well. It was almost exactly my story. And so she did her testing through me and I can test them now. Uh, 
And her lab report was very identical to mine. Her TSH was totally normal range. Once again, free T4 was, was lower end, but in, in, within range. And free T3 was rock bottom, as was mine. So it just goes to show how, and I get this, like I said, on daily, where somebody's not being treated properly or they're being underdiagnosed or undiagnosed for hypothyroid. So those are what, and like I said, you can head on over to karenmartel.com. You can bring this into your doctor. If you're in Canada, pay to have it done. If you're in the States, if you have to pay to have it done, it still doesn't mean you'll be treated properly once they do see those lab results. So it's, I'm, I always encourage, of course, to see somebody that is a functional medicine practitioner, a naturopath, um, a nutritionist like myself who can test for these things, but to see somebody that knows how to properly get this fi fixed up, basically, right? That knows, that is familiar with how the thyroid should be treated. So you can, like I said, you can pay to have it done out of pocket um, through the medical system, or you can pay to have a naturopath do it. I do it as well. Um, you can, I, can, I can't do reverse T3, but I can do the rest of them. And you can order that kit online off my website, karenmartel.com. Under the menu, you'll see hormone test kits. And in there, you'll see a thyroid lab. And it'll get sent to your house. It's a finger, it's a blood spot finger prick test. And you'll, you can get tested for all of them. So if you suspect it, there is a way. I don't care how you do it. I've given you lots of options. Go in and get this done. Now, the, the doctor's ranges are quite um, narrow. And if you were to go to a naturopath, myself, functional medicine practitioner, you're going to get a wider range, which just means that, so let's say a doctor would look at somebody whose lab reports said that their T3 or free T4 was on the low end, like maybe right on the cusp, let's say it's just over three and the range is three to seven or something. All the ranges are different because each lab will have a different way of testing. But if it's on that low range, but not out of range, rather the doctor will say you don't have a problem when a naturopath or a functional medicine practitioner or myself would say, no, you do have a problem because we want to see that thyroid, especially that free T3 and those free T4s up between, you know, middle of the road, either middle of the range or on the, preferably on the upper half of the range. So you can look you know, can dig up your old lab reports if you have to and look at the range. And if you fall on that bottom half, you would benefit from basically improving the thyroid. Okay. So this is, these are all super key things that you guys need to know because it has to do with whether or not your body's going to be able to lose weight once it's on the, you know, once you find out if there is a problem and if there is, then how to properly have it tested and have it treated as well has everything to do with whether or not your body can or cannot lose weight, basically. Now, if you're still not willing to spend the money to go do the lab work and you can't, you're not too sure, maybe you're on the fence like, well, maybe I could have one or maybe not, you know, then I suggest taking your basal body temperature. This is another indication of hypothyroidism is a low body temperature as we talked about before. So taking your temp can help diagnose your hypothyroidism. It's not like a hundred percent, but it can certainly help you then to decide whether or not you should pay to have the whole lab work done. Um, we can help find the right dose as well. Once you're on medication, it can help you decide where's what's the perfect amount that you should be taking of thyroid medication because we want to see that that temperature gets up to a normal temp. And it can also help you assess your adrenal status, which is also really important when it comes to thyroid. So the best way to do this is to get what is called a Garatherm thermometer. You can, you can get this 
at some drug stores, I find it's just best to order it off of Amazon because Amazon, it's like 10 bucks for this thermometer. It looks like the old style mercury thermometer. So it gives you a really exact temperature, which is what we want. Because even if you're just a couple below what it should be, it is indication of either hypothyroidism or adrenal issues. So I would suggest getting it, the Gera Therm, G-E-R-A Therm. You can purchase it off of Amazon and basically you want the average temperature to be like a healthy metabolism to be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius for my fellow Canadians. So if there is a low temperature, then you would definitely from there go get the thyroid panel done and to find out exactly what's happening with your thyroid, okay? And like I said, it's super important to get all of the ones mentioned. Um, reverse T3 is one that very few doctors will actually go in and test for. So you really do want to test for that because if you don't and you go get put on T4 medication, which is always every doctor's go-to, you will feel a lot worse than you do now because somebody with reverse T3 issues needs just straight uh, T3 medication. So let's get into those medications now. So if you have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, you will know that your doctor will put you on or has put you on either levothyroxine or Synthroid, both of which are T4 only medications. And there is other names for them under different brands. So if you're not sure what, what it is that you have, I would look it up on the internet and find out exactly if it's a T4 only medication. Most likely it is. Like I said, most doctors, that is what they prescribe. It's their go-to is here's your levothyroxine or Synthroid. I'll see you back here in three months where we'll retest. They may up your dose. But basically, you're getting put on straight up T4. So remember when I talked about T4 has to convert to T3. This is very important because this is where women have the issue is in the conversion. They're not converting T4 to T3. And T3 is the usable form of thyroid. So we need that T3 up. So if you're having a conversion problem, it doesn't matter how much T4 you're getting, you're not likely to get very enough T3 to make you feel better and for your body to be able to lose weight. This is really key. Now, the other options are desiccated thyroid. So desiccated thyroid usually comes from a pig and is the whole thyroid, which means that it's going to have T3 and T4 in it. It'll even have some other things in it too that will help um, your thyroid to function better because it's coming from the whole source. So T3, T4 medication is usually what most women will feel best on. And you can you can research this. You can, um, I highly suggest buying L. Russ's book, The Paleo Thyroid Solution. She's a good friend of mine. She helped me with my thyroid when I was learning all about it and figuring out my own stuff. She's taught me a lot of what I know. And her book is fantastic. It kind of walks you through all of it. But it's most women, most will feel best when they have the, both the T4 and T3 medication. And in this episode, we're not going to go through the reasons why you have hypothyroidism. Uh, of course, it's really good to work with a practitioner who understands it, who can help you to reverse your hypothyroidism with um, supplements, with lifestyle modifications, things like that, because it absolutely can be. And I always suggest people get to the root cause of their hypothyroidism. But in this episode, we're really just focusing on what you can do right now right? If you're already on medication or you're having troubles losing weight and you don't feel well, it's really important that you start feeling good as soon as you can. I'm a big believer in that. Like I went, like I said, eight, nine years 
not feeling 100% because my thyroid was underactive. And now I'm on thyroid medication and I'm continuing to try to figure out why it is my T3 is so low. And I do that with my clients as well. It's like, okay, let's get you to a place where you're optimized on your thyroid. So A, you just have the energy to even figure it out. And B, you can start losing weight. This is so important. And it's not like it's a magic bullet. But if you're putting in the efforts to lose weight and you have hypothyroidism, putting you on the medication will help your body to lose weight. If you're not putting in those efforts, if you're still eating like crap and you're not exercising and that kind of thing, you're still stressed out, then it doesn't matter how much thyroid medication you have. It's unlikely that your body will unlock the weight because you're still not eating you know, good foods and you're not nourishing your body. You know, Some people might lose some weight, but in most cases, I haven't seen it work very well unless you are putting those other efforts in. So my, my view on it is I just want you to feel better I want you, as soon as possible and to lose weight. And then from there, and, or as that's happening, then you, know, you can start to uncover why it is you have a low thyroid and what kind of supplementation you can be taking in, help, in order to help your own body to improve your thyroid. And I've seen women that have been able to you know, cut down on their medication. I've known women that have reversed the Hashimoto's, which can cause hypothyroidism and get off the medication. So it is possible. Don't think that it's not. But in this episode, we're, we're really focusing on, hey, what do I need to do right now in order to feel better and to start losing weight? Okay? So I'm just going to tell you guys also the names, okay? So like I said, levothyroxine and Synthroid are T4 only medication. And very rarely do I see that working very well for weight loss. Now, T4, T3 desiccated thyroid goes under the name in Canada as ERFA, E-R-F-A. And this is also in the download off of um, my website when you, when you download it. And then in the States, the two most popular ones are Nature Throid and Armor. So these are the two, like if your reverse T3 comes back normal, you want to head into the doctor's. And demand that you don't that you're not put on the levothyroxine or synthroid, and that you would like to do the Urfa, Nature Thyroid, or Armor, which is the desiccated T3, T4. Now, don't get me wrong; there are the odd, there is the odd person that does better on T4 only. It's just not very many. Okay, in my practice, I've seen maybe one or two over the years that I that have claimed that they feel better when they're on T4 only. Then there's something called Sidamel. Now, Sidamel is straight T3. So if your reverse T3 is high, which we're not going to get it into reverse T3 in this episode, but we will in another one. But if it's high, then you're going to want to make sure, and, and hopefully whoever you're working with understands what the reverse T3 number means, but they will likely then put you on straight T3 medication because you you want to flush out that T the the reverse T3 with straight Cinnamel so that your body just needs direct T3. Now you might be asking, well, why don't I just do straight T3, Karen? This is the usable form. It's unfortunately can be too harsh for some people. It's too direct and it can make some people feel jittery, um, high wired. There is, there is actually, it's very known for weightlifters when they're trying to slim down for their show to use T3 medication in order to help burn the fat off. So it definitely works for weight loss. And there's actually a lot of clinics that use T3 as a means to help somebody just to lose weight, even if they don't have really bad hypothyroidism but they'll still use it just to help that person to lose weight. Um, I don't do that. I don't have the ability to do that. So I always tell people, of course, work with a practitioner that understands these medications. 
and helps you to get optimized. Now, when it comes to being able to lose weight, you want to get optimized on your thyroid medication because you can be put on, th- you know, most doctors will start you at 30 milligrams of either the Synthroid or the Urfa, Nature Throid, and then say, I'll see you in three months. Unfortunately, that's just not quick enough. What can happen is within two to four weeks, your body can actually become more hypothyroid because it's getting the signal because you're suddenly added in this thyroid medication that there's thyroid medication coming in and it'll actually downregulate your thyroid farther. So you need to keep giving it to the body till it's, it's almost like you want to keep giving it till it kind of catches up. And you should be doing that every two to three weeks, ideally. So when I was treating my own hypothyroidism, I rechecked my levels every three weeks. And when I went in to get tested, I wouldn't take my thyroid medication on the morning of the test, which is super key. And from there, I slowly titrated my dose up until I was at but you know, upper half of the range and my thyroid temperature and my temperature was at 98.6. Oh, you want to be doing both of these things in order to get to that place where your body will be able to lose the weight. This is so important. You can't just be thrown on this, you know, baby dose of 30 milligrams and think that, oh, this is going to, you know, for some, for the, for some people that don't have it really low, that is, that's going to be maybe all that they need, which is awesome. But for many, many women, I see that they have to, it'll take about six to seven months in order for them to get optimized on the thyroid medication and their body to finally let go of the weight. So this is super important if you're looking to lose weight, if you have hypothyroidism, you want to work with a practitioner that understands it. We do walk people through this in the on track program. So if you're wanting to have, you know, coaching without one on one coaching, then for sure go check it out. It's karenmartel.com forward slash on track. And inside the program, I walk you through um, thyroid and we go into great detail about supplements and how to figure out where it's coming from, the hypothyroidism, getting to the root of the problem. I look at people's labs and the group coaching sessions and can help just help you to navigate the medical system and getting to that place that you're optimized and also reversing your symptoms of hypothyroidism. Okay, so that is the medication part um, and the testing part. Both of them are, is what is so key to being able to finally lose the weight. Most women just are put on levothyroxine or Synthroid and maybe they'll up it a little bit throughout the years and never see weight loss from it. So this is why, ladies, this is why. So (laughs) let's also talk about diet, of course, right? Which diet is best for somebody with hypothyroidism and why? Okay, so there's a few different little caveats for as far as what diet to use if you have hypothyroidism. I, of course, mostly work with ancestral diets because I see that that's what works best. So if you have Hashimoto's and you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition where your body attacks its own thyroid, which then causes hypothyroidism, you'll want to do the autoimmune paleo for one to preferably three months and then reintroduce some of those foods afterwards. Why? Because a lot of foods cause inflammation and leaky gut, right? So we want, it's like we want to go in and put the fires out in your body and just chill that immune system out so it quits attacking the thyroid. So the autoimmune paleo can be challenging. It's, it really eliminates a lot of foods, but it can be extremely healing. So if you can commit to, I always say just commit to 30 days and then see how, and then reassess, see how you feel. A lot of people, they feel so amazing. They just want to keep going with it. And other people, it's like, okay, that was tough. Can we start reintroducing the foods now? And we can reintroduce them one at a time until they can see which ones were causing problems in their body. Because you really don't know until they've been completely removed for three plus weeks. So that's super key. In the OnTrack program, there is an option for the autoimmune paleo meal plan. So if you're not sure that you 
you're worried about doing it, then I highly suggest going and checking that out and joining and check and doing the, just following along the meal plan. And then you can reintroduce foods and move into one of the other meal plans once you kind of know which ones are bothering your system. The other one, which I would say is best for almost anybody with hypothyroidism is the paleo. So the paleo removes a lot of the inflammatory foods, helps with the gut function because a lot of thyroid issues are, is from inflammation. So this is why the paleo one's so good. It's got lots of good fats in it, which is really important for your hormones. It removes grains, beans, you know, processed sugar, things like that corn, um, dairy. So it's really a nice, clean, really easy to follow and helps to regulate the blood sugar as well. It helps to, you know, with insulin um, sensitivity. And it, it really is just like a well-rounded, easy diet to follow that will help your body to lose weight and also help with the functioning of your thyroid because you're lowering the inflammation. The other one that has a lot of controversy about whether or not it's good is the ketogenic diet. So the ketogenic diet, I absolutely love as well. Uh, but what I've seen happen is if your thyroid levels haven't been optimized, then you just don't have the metabolic machinery in order to burn up that all that fat. So I've seen women get more hypothyroid, so their levels get worse. They'll start losing their hair. They start feeling super tired. It's really common for women to under eat when they're following a ketogenic diet. And one of the causes of hypothyroidism is called euthroid syndrome. And that is from calorie restricting diets, yo-yo dieting. So it, if you're you know, fasting and you're all the time and you're not eating enough calories, what do you think you're signaling to your body, right? Your body doesn't know that you're fasting because you're on a ketogenic diet. It thinks, hmm, there must not be a lot of food around. And so what does your body do? It eventually starts to drive down the metabolism because it thinks that there's not a lot of food around. So how does it do that? It lowers T3. So this is why I see so many women that just, it doesn't work well, or they, have, they don't know that they have a thyroid problem, and suddenly they're gaining weight on keto, or they feel like garbage on keto, and it's because they have an undiagnosed hypothyroid issue. If you're optimized on thyroid medication, and you're feeling good, then keto can be an awesome tool in order to start that getting that weight off. But what you want to do is make sure you're doing carb ups when you're doing the ketogenic diet. Um, once again, the on track program has both paleo and ketogenic diets and shows you how to do proper carb ups on the inside. So highly suggest checking those out. Um, the other one that if, if those seem like it's too much of a jump for you and you need something that's easier, then even just simply going gluten-free can be awesome. It can just be such a great stepping stone in the right direction. Going gluten-free and if you can't even dairy-free for a period of time will help with bringing down that inflammation in the body. And th gluten is known to attack thyroid tissue. So you really, it, it's definitely one of the best entry level. If you have to do, if you only can do one thing, it's going gluten-free, that's great. Preferably gluten, dairy-free. But those would be the starting places for sure. Um, if you do have hypothyroidism, okay? Uh, or those diets. And those are the ones that you really, like between paleo and keto, you really, those are the two diets that you'll probably want to stick with indefinitely because you know that you have, you're prone to hypothyroidism. So even if you fix your hypothyroidism, you get to the root cause of it and you don't need your medication anymore, you're still going to be better off following one of the ancestral diets because your body is too sensitive to those other foods and too sensitive in the means of creating inflammation in the body. So that is 
the best diets. And so between getting optimized on your medication, getting that temperature up and following the right diet is so key for being able to lose weight with hypothyroidism. Okay, so that's where we're going to end it today. And like I said, you can get your thyroid tested um, in the comforts of your own home. You can order it off my site, karenmartel.com, under hormone test kits. And the On Track program is open right now for registration. So if you're wanting more help and you want the meal plans and you want the coaching, then I suggest definitely checking it out. We have memberships starting at $25 a month. So super affordable. Check it out. If you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to email me at karen at karenmartel.com. And we will talk to you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All right, ladies, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you want more, be sure to check out karenmartel.com forward slash on track and get started today with my monthly coaching program to help you find your weight loss code. Be sure to leave me a review on iTunes and subscribe to my channel so you never miss an episode. Till next time, ladies, have an awesome week.